Hello everybody. Today, I would like to talk about one of the toughest, most dangerous gangsters in the Colombo family. The gangster I am referring to is Anthony Luciano Raimondi, otherwise known as Anthony Cigars or Anthony Shades. Raimondi had Locosa Nostra in his blood. Both of Raimondi's grandparents were members of the Black Hand. His uncle, Salvatore Lucky Luciano, started the National Crime Syndicate, otherwise known as Murder, Inc. Raimondi's father, Frank Raimondi, was a hitman for the National Commission and took part in the murders of Albert Anastasia and Joe Gallo. Raimondi was also related to Gambino underboss Neil De La Croce and Bonanno acting boss Carmine Galante, both of whom would often spend time at Raimondi's house, teaching him the ways of the mafia life. Other powerful wise guys, such as Meyer Lansky, Vito Genovese, Joe Colombo, and Carlo Gambino, would also often visit Raimondi's house while he was growing up. These mafiosos would train Raimondi to become one of the most dangerous gangsters on the streets of Brooklyn, New York. Raimondi was as tough as they come. On one occasion, when Raimondi was only 13 years old, his cousin Jimmy, who was a dangerous enforcer for Carmine Persico, stuck a pistol in Raimondi's mouth, threatening him. However, Raimondi showed no fear and challenged Jimmy to shoot him. Raimondi's fearlessness at such a young age impressed Jimmy so much that he immediately recruited Raimondi to join his crew, and from the age of 13 onward, Raimondi was one of the top enforcers for the Colombo family. During his long career in the Mafia, Raimondi showed himself to be one of the most dangerous gangsters in the Colombos, and in this video, I will be sharing a few examples of why that is. The first example, which shows just how dangerous Raimondi was, was when at just 16, he murdered Sally Burns, a made man in the Gambino family. Burns had brutally assaulted Raimondi while trying to take over the Cadabra Club, a club Raimondi had a piece of. Now, Sally Burns was considered to be one of the most dangerous hitmen in the Gambino family. However, that did not stop Raimondi from going after Burns to settle the score. To quote from Raimondi's book, When the Bullet Hits the Bone, Before I knew it, Sally was on his feet and coming at me. What did I fucking tell you, he shouted. I'm going to blow your head off and your mother's going to have a closed coffin for you. I already had the gun out of my waistband and was holding it down by my side. When I saw his hand reaching for the gun in his waistband, I just started firing, emptying the whole clip into his body. Thirteen shots. Now whose mother is going to have a closed coffin, motherfucker, I thought, tucking the Beretta back into my waistband. This just shows how fearless and brutal Raimondi could be, that he could take on a dangerous made man in the Gambinos like that and walk away with his life. Truly brutal Raimondi was. A second example, which shows just how dangerous Raimondi was, was when he straightened out Cosmo Vincenzo, the son of Camilla Vincenzo, a powerful made man in the Colombo family. In 1976, Philip Esco, a location scout for Paramount Pictures, decided to use the 802 Club, a disco Raimondi had a stake in, to shoot the film Saturday Night Fever. However, Raimondi got word that Cosmo demanded Esco use his club, the Derby, to shoot the film. So Raimondi went right to Cosmo to set him straight. To quote again from When the Bullet Hits the Bone, Raimondi said, what the fuck are you doing telling my fucking guy that he has to use the Derby Disco and he can't use the 802 to do his movie? Cosmo bristled at the tone of my voice and he shot me an indignant look. Who do you think you are talking to? Who do I think I'm talking to? I shot back. I grabbed him right by the balls and I pulled him right out of his fucking seat. I gave him a whack in the jaw and I started to give this guy a beating. Not long after... Cosmo agreed to let Paramount use Raimondi's club to shoot Saturday Night Fever. A third example of Raimondi's toughness 
was when he went to collect from two wise guys, Nicky and Carmine, who owed Alphonse Alleyboy Persico money. Once Raimundi arrived to collect the debt, Nicky and Carmine insulted both Raimundi and Persico, so Raimundi straightened them out himself. To quote again from When the Bullet Hits the Bone, We got into a heated argument. These guys were really getting on my nerves. The guys were telling me, We don't even know who the fuck you are talking about. Get the fuck out of here. One thing led to another, and the guy Carmine was sitting at his desk. On his desk, he had one of these wooden nameplates with his name on it, and I picked this thing up so fucking fast and cracked it across his fucking skull. I made a hole across his fucking head. This guy just went down. He just fell out of the fucking chair. The other guy, Nicky, he came near me, and I cracked this guy across the face. Needless to say, Carmine and Nicky both paid Raimundi the money that was owed to him. A fourth example, which showed Raimundi's toughness, was when he confronted Meyer Lansky's nephew, Ira, who had stolen over $120,000 from Lansky. Meyer Lansky was a legendary mafioso, and Raimundi was his protege, and the man Lansky would often send to straighten out anyone who dared defy him. Upon meeting Ira, Raimundi beat him brutally in retribution for ripping off Lansky. To quote a passage from When the Bullet Hits the Bone, Meanwhile, I had to take care of Ira. I gotta talk to you, I told him. You are a cocksucker. Your uncle put you over here, and you are robbing us every week. With that, I clocked him right in his fucking face. A fifth example of Ray Mundy's toughness was when he stood up to Louis the Lug. Louis the Lug was a powerful made man in the Colombo family, who had a reputation for being vicious and crazy. So when Louis demanded Raimundi beat up a mentally challenged waiter who forgot to bring him his drink, Raimundi took him on face to face. To quote again from When the Bullet Hits the Bone, I am the boss here. When I give you an order, you do it. I told Louis to get away from me. After I said that, he smacked me and said, Do you know who I am? Then I cracked him, and he went down. He got up and we began to fight. I broke the chairs over his back. We wrecked the club with our fighting. Neither of us would go down. I put all I had in my punch, hit him in the face, and the fight was over. I knocked him out, I left the club, and went home. Perhaps the greatest example of Raimundi's toughness was when he took on Eddie Lino in a bar in Brooklyn. Raimundi had a piece of this bar and would hang around there to make sure nobody got out of line. However, when Eddie Lino came in with a couple of guys and refused to pay for drinks they had bought, Raimundi went to them to straighten them out. To quote again from When the Bullet Hits the Bone, I walked over and said, Excuse me? First of all, I'm talking like a gentleman. Pay your tab. Do you know who I am? He said. Don't care. I can do anything I want, he said, and came over and poked me in the chest. I will murder you. And he smacked me on the side of my face. I gave him a shot, and he went flying back into his friends. They all fell on the floor. They went to make a move, and my guys each grabbed one of them. I gave him a beating and threw him on the floor and broke his ankle and his knee. Now, Eddie Lino was a very feared hitman in the Gambino family, who was also the cousin of Bonanno captain Frank Lino. However, that did not stop Raimundi from straightening Lino out himself and making sure nobody disrespected his bar. But wait, it gets better. When Frank Lino demanded a sit-down with Raimundi and threatened to kill him, Raimundi straightened him out as well. To quote again from When the Bullet Hits the Bone, Frankie said, What makes you think you are walking out alive? I had guys in the back who came out and pulled out their guns. Frankie, I want you to hear something. I pulled the hammer back on a forty-five pointed at his stomach. His eyes opened wide. I told him, It's pointed at your stomach. They shoot us, and I kill you. My guys will kill your guys. Soon enough, Raimundi grabbed a baseball bat and brutally assaulted all of Frankie Lino's men. Raimundi then went to Lupo the Wolf, and Lupo gave Raimundi the okay to kill both Eddie and Frankie Lino if they ever went near him. Safe to say, both Eddie and Frankie Lino never went near Raimundi again. Raimundi was not only tough and brutal, but he was highly intelligent as well. This fact was proven 
when Jimmy Burke, a gangster in the Lucchese crime family, went to Raimondi and asked him to help plan the Latanza heist. Raimondi told Burke that there was only one man who could successfully plan a robbery of this magnitude, and that was Raimondi's close friend, Meyer Lansky. Raimondi put Burke in contact with Lansky and acted as the emissary between him and Lansky as the two planned the Latanza heist. To quote again from When the Bullet Hits the Bone, Everything was so well planned. Meyer had set the time for everything to happen. He had it mapped out, so everybody had a precise job they had to do. After the robbery was successfully carried out, most of the stolen goods were kept in Raimondi's nightclub, and it was actually Raimondi who moved much of the stolen goods. Over the course of planning the robbery, Raimondi got into a quarrel with a tough wise guy by the name of Mikey Blades. Blades had accompanied Paul Vario to a meeting with Raimondi and Raimondi's cousin Jimmy to discuss the robbery. However, Mikey Blades kept interrupting the three of them, so Raimondi straightened him out personally. To quote from When the Bullet Hits the Bone once again, You know who I am? he yelled back. I am Mikey Blades. I don't give a fuck who you are. Shut your mouth and mind your business over here. The next thing I know, the guy is coming at me. Paulie didn't say anything, but Jimmy signaled me to take him. So I pulled out my switchblade, the one Uncle Lucky had given me when I was with him in Sicily, and I cut him on the right side of his face all the way down to his chin, and then on the left side, and then across his forehead, and the last cut I made was right across his chest. Now they can call you Mikey Scars, I shouted after him as the medics wheeled him out of the club. And just remember, I am the one who gave you those scars. Perhaps the most disturbing example of Raimondi's brutality was when he organized the murder of Pope John Paul I. John Paul I began to initiate a plan to investigate the selling and counterfeiting of Vatican stocks, and any man involved in it would be defrocked. Upon learning of this, the Vatican decided to murder Pope John Paul I. Eventually, a handful of representatives from the Vatican arrived at Raimondi's house and asked him for his assistance in their plan to kill the Pope. While Raimondi initially had reservations, he eventually agreed to plan out John Paul I's murder. Raimondi planned the murder and then traveled to Italy to personally oversee the killing. To quote again from When the Bullet Hits the Bone, the night of the assassination, the Pope drank the tea and was knocked out. Even if there had been an earthquake, he wasn't going to get up. I stood in the hallway outside the Pope's quarters when the tea was served. I'd done a lot of things in my life, but I didn't want to be there in the room when they killed the Pope. I knew that would buy me a one-way ticket to hell, but perhaps staying outside of the room would get me some leeway when my time came. So to conclude... Anthony Luciano Raimondi was one of the most dangerous gangsters within the Colombo family. Raimondi showed himself to be a vicious gangster who feared nobody and would have no issue taking out anyone who dared defy him. No individual was off limits for Raimondi, no matter how feared or powerful, even the Pope. Very few people, if any, ever messed with Anthony Luciano Raimondi, and those who did either lived to regret it or never survived to tell the tale.